Right now, I'm going to do the frequency sweep. All right, right there. That's uh, that's definitely boomy. So 120. I'll just make it at 120, and I'm gonna just do a little like maybe two or three decibel cut. So let me hear what this sounds like. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to actually make my cue wider. That's not enough. Still not enough. Okay, that's sounding like it's cutting the mud. Okay, now I'm actually gonna go a little bit more to five or four and a half. And now I'll do my character EQ. Now I normally go with this for acoustic guitar. That's why I know to do a high shelf boost. And with acoustical audio pink, there's also this proportional cue option, which is this red button right here. You have to enable that and enable the high shelf boost. Now, I don't know if this really affects that or not, but I put it on by default anyway. Another thing I could do is a low pass filter, which is this option. And what that does is it cuts at around 15 kilohertz, so it reduces high-end noise. So the idea is that you're boosting it to the point where it's not too bright because I don't want to pin myself into a corner for the mix. So it's definitely brighter if I turn it off, if I bypass it. That's what turn off, that's what bypass means. You just turn it off and you compare it to the original. And also, I'll try it without the low-pass filter. Yeah, I like it with the low-pass on because it just sounds a little less bright. That's where I want it. I want this thing sounding good all by itself. And that's what I do to every track. I know some mix engineers don't like doing that, but if I were recording this, that is how I would do it. And then if I want to make something thinner later on, I have that option during mixing. But for right now, I want this instrument to sound as good as it can by itself. And so what I'm gonna do is bypass both EQs and then I'll enable them while this track's playing. I'm actually going to reduce it a little bit more to about two.
Okay, so I decided to actually change it from the low pass being on to turning it off, and then I actually changed the frequency from 10 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz and backed it off to just 2 decibels increase. So I'm happy with that. Next up is the compressor, and again, we're simulating what I would have in an expensive recording studio so, so far, we have a ideal microphone because the clean EQ does that for me. And then this is like having an API equalizer. And I actually forgot one step. I can't believe that. <laughs> but it's built into this plugin, so that's okay. And that step is really simple. It's one of these preamps. It's a microphone preamp simulator. One... I believe is a simulation of the API 312, but I have to look up, but I have to look that up. All right, so here it is. And I actually made all these presets. So it's actually a API 512C preamp. And then down here, you can see that there is a 312 on here. So I'm gonna try the 312 first. And compare that to the 512C. Okay, I like the 512C better. It's a little bit softer on the transients. Very subtle, but it's definitely there. All right, next up. And you got to remember, as I'm going through these processes, my frequencies are going to change. So I might go back to either of my two EQs and change it after I process with this. But the LA3A emulation is on the cleaner end, so we'll see. But I really do like the LA3A on things like vocals, bass guitar, acoustic guitar, and that's about all I can think of right now. But it sounds good. Oh, actually, um, cello. Yeah, upright bass or cello. So the idea with this is I want to compress it on the loudest section, which we're still in right now. That's why I keep looping it here. And if I wanted to do a loop, I could actually just select this. And then over here at our transport section, click this toggle repeat. So what it'll do is any section that I grab, it'll just play back that. And then what I'm going to do is increase this peak reduction knob and that'll start putting some gain reduction on here. And the idea is that I'm just going to compress it a little bit, a little bit. Okay. A little bit meaning at the loudest part, it should not sound like I changed it or at least it shouldn't be that noticeable. And one way to do that is to crank the peak reduction knob all the way up and then back it down to when it doesn't sound bad. Once I get to the point where I think it doesn't sound that bad, I'm going to gain it up. And then I'll compare it with the compressor on and off. Now, some mix engineers like to gain stage things so that whenever you EQ or compress or whatever, the volume is equal before and after. Personally, I don't care about that, <laughs> at least not during mix prep. So I'm just going to watch my meter over here or my meter right here. 
and just make sure it's not really going past about negative eight. Now I'll take it off loop and just play some other part of the song. I'm just going to stick with what I had before. So, yeah. And I'll lower it a tiny bit because it was a little bit loud. All right. So, at this point, if I want to, I can grab that VU meter again that I had earlier and stick this after the compressor just to see where it's landing on the VU meter. And actually, I have to change the preset. Hold on. I'm just going to make this the default. It's okay. It's a little bit lower than maybe it could be, but it's okay. Next, what I want to do is have a tape machine plug-in. And one of my favorites is the Slate VTM. And what I'll do is I'll typically put it on the 16-track 2-inch tape machine model at 15 inches per second. That's what IPS means. Under my settings... I'm going to put the noise reduction all the way to the lowest setting. My wow and flutter is going to be at 25%. And the base alignment, I'll put at negative 6. Close the settings up. And most of the time, I'll put it on FG9 tape. But if I'm going for a vintage vibe, then the 456 is the one I'll go for. And basically with this plug-in... You just adjust this trimmer right here until the audio is getting around zero. And that's it. It's really easy to use. And again, I'm going to use it in the loudest part of my track because I don't want it clipping. Maybe a little bit past zero, so a little bit into the red, but not very much. And enabling it would help. By the way, it'll tell you if it clips because these lights right here will turn red. Watch. They're not turning red. Hmm. There we go. It turned red that time. I don't want it to be that loud, so. Let me go back to the beginning. Okay, great. Now, if I, again, if I want to move this VU meter past slate VTM to see where I'm landing on the VU meter. Good. 
Finally, again, we're recording as if we have expensive gear. So, let's go back. We have the gain staging. So, it's at a good level, right? And then we have the virtual mic. So, we can change that. I didn't end up using it, but that's one of our options. Then we have the virtual microphone preamp which I have mine set to an API 312 vintage emulation. Expensive stuff, right? Then, clean EQ, character EQ. Now here's another expensive one, the API 550A, which is about a $1,200 equalizer if you get the lunchbox version. And then, the LA3A, which is, I think, like a $1,800 compressor. And that's going into a Studer tape machine. And I don't even know how much those cost. Finally, though, we're going to go into the mixing console. So I like SSL, solid state logic stuff. Now, before I bought Acoustica Audio Sand, I was using, I'll just show you on screen, the FGS, which is this EQ from Slate Digital, along with the British Channel and white channel from IK Multimedia. Now I'm still gonna use these plugins, but I'm gonna use them a lot less because of sand. So my intention is to emulate a solid state logic line input. And sand comes with a ton of line inputs. Look at this, line one through 32. That's crazy, right? You can do bus preamps, you can do microphone, which Solid State Logic really isn't known for their mic preamps, but you have that as an option, all right? If you want a little bit more saturation, I guess. But I like to stick with the line inputs. So what I like to do, now that I have this as an option, is to change these. So line one is what I'm going to go for, and again, the gain staging is very important. Now this has a built-in trim but I like to see what the VU meter looks like. By the way, I don't know why there's no meter on this plugin. There should be. <laughs> I could even use another version of sand. I'll use the sand EQ, which has VU meters, LED ones at that. So I can actually just use this. And see, it's hitting right around where the orange is. That's where they want you to hit. They don't want you to hit in the red. You can go in the red, but you really should try to avoid it. Right in the orange is where I like to be. So that's just saying, yeah, you're good. And so I'm going to choose line one. And that's it. Now I have these other plugins up just to show you, yeah, if you want to do a Neve type of sound, once again, Acoustica Audio's latest plugins have a ton of virtual console emulations. This one has 32. It also has microphone preamps. But I'm not using those, so I can delete it. And I still will use VCC because I spent a lot of money on this plugin. <laughs> and in general, I mean, I've been using VCC for so long that I would feel weird not using it. But I'm going to try using just sand for a little bit, see how it works, see if I like it better. But if I were using VCC and trying to do a... SSL emulation, then the Brit 4KG or Brit 4KE are the ones I would go with. Are they necessary? Uh, I mean, I like it because, again, I think it adds a little bit of extra character, but perhaps more importantly, it keeps the tracks a little separated. Look, there's a reason why they sell analog summing boxes and these type of plugins are a digital replacement for those. I'm not going to say it's as good as a real summing box, but 
it approximates it. And that's why I set everything up like this. And guess what? Yeah, it takes a little bit of extra time. Now, it takes a lot less when I'm not explaining everything. But in the end, when I drop these tracks, and by the way, I forgot to, to mention um, the last thing I have to do is go up here to the file menu and go to render. And we'll call this acoustic guitar or AC GTR. I could even put the song name in there. I don't want a million things called AC GTR by itself. The important thing is wave file, 32 bit floating point. If you really want to go crazy, 64 bit FP and auto full speed offline. I like to leave a no tail and master mix entire project. And then I will render it. But yeah. Oh, make sure your sample rate is whatever the native is. And I forgot mono. Yeah, because this is only one track. So that's pretty much it for how I do this. Now for the rest of the video, I'm going to show you the other plugins that I use for this purpose. But yeah, um, this is the way I've been doing things for I think since like 20 maybe 12 or 2013 and my mixes sound really good because I take the time to add all this extra stuff that in the end makes the mix a lot easier makes it better and I'll just say this if you add all these plugins up let me play this track now that all these plugins are on and let's just take a look at the CPU usage down here. Actually, the real CPU usage, I'll show you on here. See, it says RT CPU. Watch that when this track plays. So would I be able to use this on even a 10 track mix? Absolutely not. It would start crippling my computer. But because of the magic of rendering out tracks one by one, I'm able to get all that premium quality ahead of time and save my CPU from dying. <laughs> not literally, but you know what I mean. Now, part of my CPU is that I'm using screen capture software. But the bottom line is I free up CPU, I free up RAM, I get a better quality start to my mix, and I wanted to pass this information on to you guys because this is a key part of how I get my mixes sounding so great. And yeah, so if you want to hear this whole song, or at least a part of it, go to the SoundCloud page on Real Home Recording. Don't forget to download the track because if you listen to it through SoundCloud streaming, it sounds bad, but you can download the, the original file, the FLAC file, and hear it for yourself. By the way, I'm operating at 96 kilohertz. If you're operating at 44.1, the CPU usage is about three quarters less. So if you like this video and you want me to make the mixing one, leave a thumbs up and leave me a comment saying that you thought this was useful and I will show you my mix template for the old school mixing philosophy in the box 2019 edition for an upcoming video. Thanks for watching everybody.